How's it going? My name is Jacob. I work for Smetting Performance, and this is going to be part two of our 416 cubic inch engine build. Previously in part one, I built the whole short block of this engine. It's running our Smetting crankshaft rods with a 4032 forged piston set from Icon. In this video, we're going to assemble the cylinder heads and build the whole rest of the engine. Put the pan on, put the timing cover on, bolt the heads down, run the valve train, and install the intake manifold. Step one, I've got my cylinder heads lined out right here. These are Smetic Performance 11 degree, 260 cc heads that are a six bolt casting, and they are compatible with OEM LS3 rocker arms. They come with a 2.165 stainless steel one piece intake valve, solid stem for strength, and they come with a 1.6 23-8N steel exhaust valve. Now this type of steel is extremely similar and has a lot of the same properties that you'll see in an Inconel valve, except this valve is not nearly as brittle as Inconel. Inconel is extremely non-forgiving. If you valve float that sucker, or have any sort of bad harmonics go through the engine, it's pretty brittle and it can risk being damaged. Whereas our valve is almost a little softer, if you will, and can take some of that extra abuse that you might see on a super aggressive race engine or just a high RPM street motor. So on this customer, we're gonna run our 700 lift rated spring set with titanium retainers. It's gonna get a Holly high ramp, so it's probably gonna turn good RPM. And yeah, we're going to get these heads assembled. These springs at our 1.81 installed height will have about 160 pounds on the seat and about 460 open, which is kind of right on the limit of what I would like to see with a stock rocker, but it'll work perfect. Our valves have a hardened tip on them. You can actually probably see the color, just the different color right there. And so that valve tip is super strong and will not wear away like stock LS3 valve tips do when you put big springs on them. So I'm going to start the time lapse, put these heads together real quick, and then we'll jump over to the engine. Here they are, all assembled, looking freaking sweet. Fully CNC ported, 11 degree valve angle. Super cool. So let's jump on the engine block and let's finish this sucker up.
So this engine is gonna run one of our Smetting Stroker oil pans. And we also fitted a trapdoor baffle system inside of it to kind of help control the oil around the pickup tube. Kind of neat. The short block is completely sealed up all together. It's got our pan, timing cover, 25% underdriven ATI balancer without the AC pulley, pretty nice. And we got our nice LS3 timing cover. The customer, Dakota Cook, his, I think either the roll cage or the engine bay or the wheels maybe, something on the car is this same purple. And so he wanted some of that into the engine. So I think the valve covers and the high ram are gonna be done the same purple as well. And I kinda like it. It's kinda growing on me just seeing it's kind of a bright color to make this engine pop a little bit, give it some character and some life. So next, I'm gonna drop the lifters into the engine. We're gonna run a link bar hydraulic roller lifter, and then we'll put our cylinder heads on. This engine, we're gonna put some ARP head studs on it. And whenever you're building an engine that has studs and multi-layer steel head gaskets like these Kometics, I always find that if you put the studs together first and then put the head gasket on, you'll end up just cutting yourself and the head gasket gets hung up on the studs. So I like to put the dowels in, pop the gaskets on, and then we'll come back with the studs. And it just makes it a lot easier. Head studs are all installed on the engine. I lubricate the bottom and the top of the threads with CMD Extreme Pressure Lube number three. It's really good stuff, it's super clean. I kind of don't like the ARP stuff anymore. Whenever we build an engine with a bunch of the ARP assembly lube, it's the gray stuff that just gets everywhere. And if you take the oil pan off a motor right after it's been started, the entire bottom of the oil pan is just covered in that gray goop. Whereas this CMD stuff tends to blend into the oiling system and the inside of the engine is just super, super clean whenever we use it as a lubricant. So I put the studs in the block, CMD's on the bottom of the threads. I'm gonna apply some on the top of the threads next. And I ran these down with an impact super lightly and then I came back with an Allen key just to check that they were all final seated into the block. These only, only need to have ideally less than five, maybe even two foot pounds of pressure on them. Basically nothing, just seat it in the block. Don't torque it into the block because we're gonna let the nut pull the stud tight against the cylinder head. So next up, let's drop some heads on.
So these ARP, the washers they include in their stud kit, one side of them is serrated and has this grippy texture, and the other side is smooth. And the grippy texture is supposed to go against the aluminum on the head so that it bites into the aluminum, and then when you torque the nut, the nut can smoothly spin on the flat. Well, on the last one, y'all probably won't be able to see. Hold on, let me find a flashlight. On this last one inside the head, it accidentally flipped over when I was dropping it down. Frick! I'm gonna pop the head off real quick and get that fixed. Even though it seems ins insignificant, it's always good to just do things the right way, take a couple steps back, correct the issue, and now we can move forward knowing it's 100%. Moving right along, the cylinder heads are now on this beautiful engine. Next, we're going to install the push rods and the rocker arms. I always, in pretty much every performance LS that has a spring over, I don't know, 420 pounds of open pressure, I run the thicker wall push rods. They make 5 16 push rods in a couple different thicknesses. The standard thickness is a .080 wall thickness on the push rod. And that works great for you know your normal engine with light spring pressure. It's a great push rod. The next one up is a 105 wall thickness. So they add quite a bit more thickness to the wall, make the push rod a lot stiffer. And in a higher RPM performance engine, I always option to get the better, thicker push rod. So we're gonna drop those in, install our rocker arms, and this thing is almost done. The intake ports on these heads is expanded so much towards the top that it actually breaks into the bolt hole for the intake rocker arm bolt. So whenever you're working with these heads, you always want to put a little bit of thread sealant on the tip of your bolt. That way the intake runner doesn't draw oil from the, under the valve cover. And we use this type of thread sealant on all of our motors. It's got PTFE, which makes it fuel resistant because there's always a little bit of fuel mixed into your oil. And so this way, uh, with the PTFE, this thread sealant will last a very long time. The long block is complete in all of its glory. We've got those real nice cylinder heads. I, I like the purple. The more I work on this, the more it grows on me. Normally these LSs, they look just kind of dull. It's all just raw aluminum, which is cool in its own fact, but throwing a little bit of color on there, and then once we get the purple valve covers and high ram to match, uh, it's gonna look really cool. For now though, we're just gonna install the high ram raw in its aluminum, and the customer is going to 
get it powder coated once he takes delivery of the motor. The motor is all finished up. Well, the long block at least. Unfortunately, the Holly High Ram is still on back order for probably about a month or so. So we're gonna hold on to the engine just like this. Make sure you subscribe though, because once the High Ram does come in, we're gonna do a follow-up episode showing this engine running on the dyno and making some steam with these real nice 11 degree cylinder heads. So. Thank you very much for watching the video. As always, leave a comment below if there's anything you want us to show in the future. And have a good rest of your day.